as a professional, we're building the frame, if you will, of your vehicle for success or of your vehicle for your resume or for your work. But you are supplying us with your content. So if you're asking for somebody to have SEO ready blog content or optimized images and things of that nature, these are things that it's a little bit more time consuming. And keep in mind, this is part and parcel of the project that's required. So if you need that, it's going to be charged accordingly. Here we go. Podcast time, everybody. Mike Tech Studios. Episode 30. How much do you charge for a website? All right, folks, thanks for checking in for the next episode of the Mike Tech Studios podcast. This is Michael Midnight. We're going to get right into the thick of things for today's topic. How much do you charge for a website? So this wasn't actually going to be the next episode in the series. But when you are the one that is editing them and putting them together, you can switch things around however you want. And that's what we're doing today. So... I actually thought this was going to be a good episode to talk about because just like most of the episodes that I talk about and 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 speak to you uh, folks that are tuning in and listening, they're about things I deal with on a day-to-day basis as a uh, business professional and with folks that I have either in the industry, in the field, or just clients. For example, I just put a funny video up on social media. It was about $1 video editing. I had somebody who actually emailed me a few days ago and asked me if I would work on 1,300 medical videos for a dollar a piece. Needless to say, I did not continue with that opportunity, (laughs) but I was having a, a interesting conversation with a friend of the podcast and a friend of mine, and they were essentially looking to do a new website, or I guess in their sense, they would be doing a website for the first time. Now, they have a lot of ideas, and unfortunately, it seems like they're kind of stuck in that perfection phase. They want to make sure their stuff is good enough or just right or just perfect, but they've been in that phase for about two years. And as they've been going through the situation of of really trying to get their website together, they're going through the same pain points that most of us do, and I'm sure I did starting out, and really landing on some key questions moving ahead. What do I charge? What do I want to have on my website? What am I doing with my website? Why do I want a website? So she and I sat down and just had a little bit of a, you know, a heart to heart, real powwow. We heard some pitfalls and unfortunately horror stories with some uh, previous talent, I guess we can call them that, that has attempted to, I guess, get her business. And it didn't really work out because uh, I feel like The website itself is probably not where it needs to be project-wise, content-wise, and also the talent that they were dealing with, and I use the word talent air quotes very lightly, was just not professional at all. It didn't end up working out, but it really did highlight some issues that I think folks listening could really benefit from. Number one, this is something I want to highlight again and again and again and again. How much do you charge? That's the title of this episode and is the reason why I'm doing this podcast episode, right? You can charge whatever you want as a professional. So with that being said, as long as the website does what it's supposed to do, it doesn't matter if I do it in 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, or two months. Doesn't matter if I charge you $50, $100, $5,000, or $10,000. I mean, it will probably with a client. I don't like to surprise people with those types of changes of numbers, but as it goes, you get what you pay for. So as you can imagine with this client, or I could say this talent rather, they're threshold for what they were charging was rather low. They weren't really offering much, but I also didn't really hear the transparency and communication that was supposed to occur. So with every project that I do, I don't care if it's a business card. I don't care if it's a $10,000 project. I do a statement of work the exact same way. The deposit and payment processes might be different with bigger projects, but it doesn't change the the initial, the briefing, the preamble, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing, right? So when you are, uh, and and now I'm going to kind of take you into the scope of the designing professional, what it is that I go through when I approach somebody for a a website project. Now, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a web developer. The majority of content that I put together and, and that I create 
website related is going to be on WordPress. And I decided this, hold on. I, I know I hear a lot of people groaning right now and raising their hand. I, I get it. I get that you have your favorite. You, you, Wix might be, or you want to develop using something else completely. I get it. I get it. Here's the reason why. Okay. In my experience in the last 15 years alone, it has been unanimously obvious out in the field, small independent contractors, you know, sole proprietors, all the way up to companies that are making about $15 million a year of take home profit revenue, all use WordPress. 100% of these people use WordPress. And I understand that WordPress can be janky. It's not perfect. All of your options are not going to be perfect. Once you have the money and the budget to specifically create a website that is not only profitable, but fits specifically for your use case, then have at it. Do whatever it is you want to do right? But for keeping things simple and keeping things visual and being able to have the clients manage these things. So the, the, this is the very important deal. You get on GoDaddy, you charge somebody quite a bit of money a month for their hosting and their services. And the majority of that stuff is not necessary. It's not needed, right? So for me, when I'm working with an individual, I want them to be able to do something that I know I could do and they could do. I could walk them through it. Worst case scenario, if they screw something up, we can reboot their website in the last time that they did a download. I get them in the thicket of things is how, how it works, but they're responsible for the download unless I uh, have this client on retainer and we do it on a monthly basis. When we're talking about a website, okay, I want you to think about what it is that you're asking a business. I want a website. Okay. What are you looking to do with this website? Do you have your content, your media, your photos, your copy? Do you have this all ready to go? Because look, I mean, most of this website stuff, you could do yourself. The problem is, is that how much is really worth your time? You can sit here and mutter through this. I mean, I have folks coming to me like, hey, can you set up my podcast for me? Sure. And I and I put up a very high cost in order to do this. I go, why is it so much? It's so simple. I go, if it's so simple, why aren't you doing it? Number one, understand that when somebody is giving you a estimate or a statement of work or anything like that, it is based on their time for this project. It's not necessarily, you know, per hour, things like that. This is the scope of the project. There's a timeline involved. So different times of the year are going to yield you different price points. As it gets to the holiday season, as we're starting to rapidly approach around, unfortunately, prices are going to go up because there's a lot of things that are going on. We have the Mike Tech Studios greeting card series, the holiday cards coming out. They start to get generated. There's time for them to be designed. The envelopes, hopefully we'll have them available directly on the website uh, this year for purchase throughout the states and uh, potentially throughout the world, depending on the shipping options. It's going to make things a little bit more... If there's a website project that is time sensitive thrown into the middle of that or during, you know, again, Christmas time, New Year's time where resources are thin or, you know, we've already scheduled that kind of time to be downtime or rest time or we've already worked for something else. So timing comes into a critical juncture when we're making a price. When I go and I pitch somebody a price, it is good for 30 days. If you want to sign off on that, great. If not, hey, you know what? Let's talk. Let's see where I am in two months. Obviously, you know, a price that I give you in February is not going to be credible in October or November. It's just too much time has passed. Too many things may have changed. Let's reevaluate. It's, it's like the same thing if you break your tooth and you go to a dentist and they give you an idea of what the price is in February and then you really mess that tooth up in, you know, six or eight months and then you come back. There's a lot more work that needs to be done than there might be other people that have already come in ahead of you. So these are things to keep in mind. Also, we were having this conversation and we were, I, I was really keen on what this website was being used for as a creative, as an artist, as a developer, as somebody who's maybe looking for a, I guess, basically a platform to show their stuff off. A website is a great place. It's like a interactive uh, media business card, if you will. If you are a performer, let's say, for example, you have your, your dances or your singing or your talents that you want to kind of have on all in one 
one place. And rather than to send folks on social media, you know, YouTube, Facebook, things like that, platforms that you don't own. Now, mind you, you can only do so much on Facebook until Facebook makes you or pushes you to log into your Facebook account. You may have content that you want to show or share on YouTube that now YouTube maybe decides, ah, you know, this might not be kid friendly or there might be a piece of music that's a little too similar or a lot of my creative uh, friends and contacts, unfortunately, like to do covers uh, of known musicians and then that gets copyright claimed and pulled. You kind of want to have something maybe on your own site to show this type of media and content that might not be conflicted. Now, you can have links from your YouTube channel on your personal website. That's a bonus. But just keep in mind, there's going to be the limitations of YouTube showing up on your website. So that's for, let's say, the creative individual. Now, if you're a business... And this is something that I want you to kind of keep in mind as well. This also works for the creative individual, but the businesses as well. Are you setting up this website as a big sizzle reel piece for your brand, your product, your service, or you as a celebrity or identity? Or are you looking for this website to make profit, to be profitable? right? Is it selling a product or service? Is it going to be heavily invested and in, in, in rooted in SEO? Are you designing it with intent and purpose to be profitable in a business perspective? Or is it just something to be a little more glamorous and to show folks something as a addendum to maybe a resume or, or professional business piece? Now, this makes a very big difference when you're going into the scope of the project for me as a professional, because I'm going to approach this differently. Number one, if this is more or less along along the lines of a resume piece, I want to make sure that your content is top notch. I want to make sure that your video is sharp, is well polished, is well edited. Right. I do all these things. I can offer this as a all in one service for individuals that come to me and say, hey, I'm looking for a website. For example, I had uh, a smaller, I guess you can call them a newspaper blog or sports blog over the summer. And they had come across my work. They were really excited to work with me and they were really hard on about price. What do you charge? What do you charge? When can we start? When can this be ready by? And the problem was the content. The content wasn't ready. They had at least I uh let's say maybe 20 or so, there's more, I think it was in the 30s, but let's just say 20 or so writers, uh, tentatively, photos for each, bios for each, you know, they didn't have a logo, they didn't have a lot of their content ready to go. So I couldn't, in a sense, get a project ready and I couldn't give them a deadline or a time frame because they didn't have the content necessary in order to be able to, you know, get their get their project going. As a professional, we're building the frame, if you will, of your vehicle for success or of your vehicle for your resume or for your work. But you are supplying us with your content. So if you're asking for somebody to have SEO ready blog content or optimized images and things of that nature, these are things that it's a little bit more time consuming. And keep in mind, this is part and parcel of the project that's required. So if you need that, it's going to be charged accordingly. For this example, unfortunately, this group didn't really have any content ready to go. I was having a problem just getting their logo and offered to design their logo. And, you know, they were kind of like, no, we already have this going. And, uh, you know, I, I said, hey, you know, let's circle back when you guys are ready to go. I don't feel comfortable moving forward with where we are. They tried to do it themselves and it was definitely rough. Uh, I saw the logo that they had and it was literally half a screen large. <laughs> so I've never seen a banner that big and using professional people, professional athletes as part of their logo, which is completely copyright infringement and will get them into trouble. I don't touch those types of projects. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, they, they, they might be profitable uh, short term, but my name will be on that. My business will be on that. Not interested. Also headaches that you try to avoid when you do go into these type of, you know, projects. All right. So we got, we got the price down. We got the content down. So let's talk further. A lot of people like to use this as a launching pad for just their content. Hey, you know what? The more your business, your product, your name is on different platforms, the better it is for your SEO. If you're Dave's Pizza and then your website is davespizza.com, well, that's going to help your SEO. It's your, your domain and brand authority is, is, is pretty high. Mike Tech Studios, same thing for me. If I do everything based off of that of the podcast, the domain authority that is attached to Michael Midnight and Mike Tech Studios is rather high. So this can also help for folks that are looking to launch, you know, podcast sites. There's links all over the place. Sometimes there's video media or extended uh, show notes or just extra perks or even memberships that you want to build in that you may not be able to do with different platforms. You know, so 
some people just have different uh, services or platforms that they use to try to entice folks to donate or, or do a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaigns to, can't think of the other one off the top of my head, unfortunately, right now, but there's so many of them that people use that uh, try to get the listenership involved, invested behind the scenes, things like that. When you have an SEO focused or content focused podcast site launch pad, if you will, it makes it easier for people to kind of see in, an, in, in a snapshot what you're about, right? And as a business, that's invaluable. If, if you are, uh, let's say you're a recruiter or you're a, an IT recruiter, right? People kind of want to know what you're about before they deal with you. And if you have that availability for people to check out your content or your business or your company before they reach out to you, they feel a little more reassured or they know what to expect. They, 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 they kind of have a good idea of who you are, what you stand for and what you're about, which is invaluable. I guess for blogging, it would be considered evergreen content. This would be similar. So for SEO purposes, very invaluable, right? So we have those three. The fourth uh, section would be externals or addendums that you want to have uh, connected to this podcast. Let's say, for example, you are a some sort of professional, maybe a car repair individual, or you do something that is food related, food prep. You want to do some sort of scheduling, booking, right? Uh, maybe you're a, a therapist and you want to be able to have folks book sessions and see your availability. That's not something that you have to worry about too much in WordPress because there are other products or services that you can link from buttons that are attached to the website. You see that that makes it pretty cool. These are things that start to stray away from what we're actually designing for your website. So let's say you want to do merchandise, right? I want to, hey, I have all this swag. I want to do, you know, the Mike Tech Studios podcast swag. Check it out. We have mugs, we have shirts, we have hoodies, polos, all this stuff. That is a separate headache all in itself. And that you will say, uh, people will ask that in their bids, in their contracts, or in their statements of work. Hey, are you looking to sell? sell something? Are you looking to promote merchandise, if, whether it be WooCommerce, Shopify, or, or anything in between or similar? These are things that really involve a lot of legwork. You know, for example, cross-pollination or cross-promoting of different products. Hey, you like this. You may also like this. Being able to have people log in and create accounts, not only for billing, but for shipping purposes. The different guidelines and privacy requirements that go into that. Not necessarily, again, website focus. I, this would not be something me as a as a website designer would be responsible for. This would be the individual, the product, the business, the entrepreneur that is looking to have this be a part of their uh, website paradigm. Right. So I can advise them, but that's where, you know, the, the, the breadth of my experience definitely laps. And that is my, my edge. You would have to consult a lawyer or somebody legally knowledgeable in moving forward with the privacy requirements. But jumping back into shopping, shipping, shipping variants, coupon codes, combinations, and making sure that things work well, not only on the computer, but on a tablet, a phone, different mobile devices. Now with WordPress, there are, there, there's going to be some hangups, you know, you go to do an update, you want to make sure that nothing breaks. Plugins do help, but when you have 500 plugins running at once, it's going to bog down and slow down your website. So you really got to be methodical and really carefully thought out about the type of content and the layout that you're looking for. And this would be the equivalent of, I had a, a friend of mine who was moving and they, you know, they wanted somebody who was decent enough price point wise to do what they do and had a good reputation, but they also didn't have a lot of their stuff ready to go packing up and, and, and boxed up. And they expected these movers, these guys that showed up to help them with the moving. Well, if they're getting paid $45 an hour or whatever it is for moving and it's something ridiculous, keep in mind, they're getting paid $45 an hour to help you throw stuff in boxes. They don't care about your china or your glass or whatever it is. They will move it, but they're not responsible for packing it carefully. This is not a FedEx office or Kinko's or UPS store or, or you know, specialty packing service, unless this is something that you've specifically sought out. They did end up being charged several hours for labor and services with the moving company and were a little bit surprised that the bill was higher than it needed to be. But hey, that's what they needed to do. This is the same thing here. So when you are working on 
on a website? Are you also going to be working on SEO? Are you going to be also working on your content, business cards, printed promotions, digital ads, any of those things? Keep that in mind when you're having a conversation and, and, and a consultation with whoever it is that you're working with as far as for that talent. I try to be cost effective about that with folks. I'm not going to charge them the same price for just a website and just a business card or for doing it at the same time. Actually working on these things together makes my life and my job a little bit easier because we can brand you accordingly from printed to digital to social media ads. If it's voiceover work or video editing, really polishing that content up, man, you're going to look great regardless as to where you are in the branding aspect of things, right? Wherever your product, your service is. To answer your question and really to wind this show up, what is it that you charge for a website? No price is going to be the same because no project is going to be the same. What helps out the price points is doing your research. If you have a website already, what you like about it, what you don't. If you don't, take a look at a couple of other websites. What do you like about them? What is it you don't like? What is it you would like to see in yours? What colors do you like? What colors don't you like? Is this something you're going to be more heavily used uh, or having use cases on with mobile devices? Or are most of your clients going to be on the computer? Are they young? Are they old? Are you going to be selling a lot of content? Are you going to be selling a lot of digital content, physical content, merchandise? These things all come into play. And it all makes it a little bit easier for the person you're asking to do this or company to give you exactly what it is that you're looking for. Because at the end of the day, every statement of work that I do, I make sure that it's clear as day on both sides what we're looking for, what the outcome is expected to be. We don't want to scope creep. We don't want to be halfway through a project and go, oh my God, this is so great. Can we add X, Y, Z, one? One, two, three, A, B, C. No, because we've really planned out the content based on the timeline that's available. Now, if we could be flexible with certain things, yes. But just understand that as a customer, if you ask more and there's already a timeline in place, well, the talent might be at a place where they may not be able to give you what it is that you're looking for in the agreed upon time. Just be communicative, be open be responsive and trust the fact that the individual that you're giving your baby to, your 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 brand, your merchandise to make it look great knows what they're doing. Unless of course you talk with them and you realize they have no clue and then definitely come talk to me if you need advice. I'd like to be able to have this type of conversation with my consulting or with my brainstorming session. You know, let me know. Talk. Let me let me know what works for you. Anyway, feel free to check out other episodes of our podcast. Appreciate your time and thanks again for tuning in. This has been Michael Midnight signing off. Take care, guys, and be safe.